Welcome back to the Surface Wave Podcast, everybody. Lalo over here. Got my very favorite co-host in the whole wide world, Nick. Thank you. You're too nice. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he says the best code, just made it like a little tiny smile on my heart. Melt okay. a little bit. Yeah. And nice then we so have nice. a very special guest today, Coulter, the soldier. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Thank you for Absolutely. having me. Rise like, up. Thanks for being here, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cult of the Soldier, sick name for one. Like that's the their Instagram handle, right? Yeah, yeah. And yep. it's so fire, bro. Nick, you're talking earlier. There's like a story behind it. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, a friend of mine. He he gave me that name because like when we when I first went on tour, uh-huh. I was down to drive like a long distance. Like the first real <laughs> tour I ever went on, I drove all the way from. Boise, Idaho, all the way to Albuquerque, New Mexico by myself. Oh my God, bro. Yeah. That's a journey. All the way by myself. Yeah, One of my favorite so. city names, by the way, too. Albuquerque. <laughs> Albuquerque, yeah. I love Albuquerque. Yeah, yeah. So. Isn't it like 20 something hours or something, right? It's, yeah, it's it's a long drive. You gotta uh, you gotta break it up for sure in, in two days. I think I stayed somewhere in like Utah, like some small little <laughs> little town, stayed in like a Motel 6 or something. Like, just, Sometimes you gotta like watch your back, <laughs> look at your shoulder. Yeah, I just, I just like crashed out for like six or seven hours and then got up and then finished my my drive. Oh, you know? What is what is your first show? Yeah. What is Coulter's like playlist on that road trip? Oh, road trip playlist. Oh, Even man. back then too, what would you be listening to? Uh, a lot of West Coast. I listen to almost everything when it comes to rap. Only kind of rap I probably don't listen to is like mumble rap, really. Okay, but, okay. Like I won't, you won't find Young Thug <laughs> or like Uzi Vert in my okay. playlist, you know. Yeah, but what's uh what's the road snacks you're bringing oh that's Ooh, legendary uh pistachios <laughs> pistachios, oh, pistachios what? yeah dang yeah pistachios uh let's see uh yeah what's what? the the gummy worms okay the gummy worm candies yeah and uh dang, okay. probably, uh, maybe some beef jerky see that's what i, I like jerky I always go jerky, is like yeah. has to be there bro it has to yeah. be there i was like clinching my but <laughs> yeah, it's waiting for this. Please say Please jerky. Say jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I got too excited for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but damn, that's a that's. I mean, yeah. And then you just got that nickname, Cold yeah, Cold Soldier. And it just stuck. Yeah, I mean, I never really had another nickname like. So yeah, the Colts or the Soldier. You know, it it stuck, and then it went with my military background too. So it kind of, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's that. And so you were in the Navy, you said, right, too. Yeah, yeah, I was in the Navy for uh, four years. Straight out of high school? Yeah, straight out of high That's school. That's so sick, man. Yeah. And you didn't have a really plan to go? Or did you had a plan just because you're, uh, you're saying uh, also it was a tradition, and you yeah. kind of want to keep that tradition going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my dad was in the submarines for four years, and then his dad, uh, Bob, my grandpa, was also in the military. Shout that's out such Grandpa a, Bob. That's a, such a solid grandpa name. It's Bob. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa Bob. Yeah. yeah I, could, you would never find me in a submarine, but it's way too, yeah. scary. It's way too scary for me. I already yeah. sweat enough. I don't, I don't know how he did it. He said that there was a lot of you know, like different activities they would do to pass the time, okay. like lifting weights, like in the submarine you know, too. Yeah, Dang. they they had, they had like a fitness area, but he would lift a lot of weights. Like he learned how to play the guitar. Oh wow, a lot That's of sick. a lot of arm wrestling matches for money, like <laughs> just random shit. You know. Well, I can't. Yeah, uh, I can't imagine like being with like uh like for they probably spent quite a while in that submarine. So like staying with your yeah. friends for that long inside of a confined space, like that has to be kind of. I don't know if they like go nuts in that like situation. I think yeah. you have to like depend on your friends for sure in that situation, like your your crewmates and stuff. Yeah. Maybe we could do a submarine challenge. We'll stay in a little, like a little, no. <laughs> and see how long we could last. You know, imagine like we go, <laughs> like you're talking about like working out underwater and stuff. Like imagine we go in the submarine, I just come out super jacked. <laughs> oh, that'd be how was how was the food in the navy? Is it a little different, or like is it basically it, the same thing? It's actually pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. The chow hall. Yeah. Ah, oh, see, I'm too so. People know me. I'm a, like a really picky eater, so yeah. I feel like I'd be like too ungrateful. I'd be like, you might if you leave this off the plate real quick. Oh, you would starve <laughs> I would, out there. Bro. I would. I would starve and probably get like. I'd be like the weird coincidence. Not like one of the first times where I get discharged because I just won't eat the food. Yeah, <laughs> like I'd be. It would be like a weird little thing. <laughs> like coming from. Uh, what? What? Um. Did you have what? Like instead of the navy though, what? Like other dreams did you have before that? Like coming out of high school, or did you have anything planned? Yeah, um, I was considering basketball. 
And Ooh. actually, I had an opportunity to uh, play point guard at uh, Skagit Valley Community College. Damn. And, and I kind of, after the Navy, it's not like I regretted it, but like I kind of wanted to explore that other path. But mm-hmm. then I jumped into music, and so I was like, I was enjoying the music, so I kind of just not gave up on the basketball one, but I kind of just, you know, didn't, Put in the back didn't, seat again. didn't pursue it. Yeah, but it was it was a real opportunity that I could have done. I could have started and um, started been the starting point guard for that. Community Damn, college. that's that's crazy. Like when you think about like life and like the, the twists <laughs> yeah, and turns and the different journeys yeah. you could have gone on. Like, what would have happened then? You wouldn't be here. Coulter with a three point R. Yes. <laughs> oh, the new nickname, dude. <laughs> Did you have it? I mean, that nothing like a nice swish. I think it's the best sound in sports. Have that net snap. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I had a little three ball. And, Ooh. Yeah, a little three ball. I would attack, you know. Attack Were you able game. to play in the Navy like a little bit? Like, did they have courts and stuff? Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, I, I played a lot in the Navy too. But yeah, just not like for the Navy college. But oh, I yeah. That's, forget played. that. They have the, the I, I know, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that'd be kind of a cool to, way to be in military and play sports, too. Like, yeah. all, I don't know. Yo, those, the Army-Navy football games are so much fun to watch, too. Oh, and, it, you know, it's in the Lincoln Financial. Oh, State. yeah, it's I mean, the best. It's the best. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a good rivalry. <laughs> mm-hmm, for sure. And even though sometimes I'm like, I know they're going to run it. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still, it's still <laughs> nice. Run the it's ball. still nice. Yeah, they run it a lot. I, I, get, <laughs> I love when they do the, the alternate uniforms, though, when they get, like, really creative like the anchor on the helmet or oh like, so like sick. some of those designs like oh i just don't get how they come up with that sometimes like, well, there's certain so- aspects of like college football that's just like so much fun like you don't get that in the nfl yeah and yeah, like they're, in, they're in the passion hard. too yeah though there's a lot more of that are you yeah. big are you big into college football too yeah yeah i follow uh college football Boise, yeah do, do you have uh, a favorite team i follow <laughs> probably boise state the most but i grew up following uh u-dub yeah because, mm-hmm. you know you know, I kind of yeah. sad when Coach Pete went to UW. I was like, it damn, broke all our hearts yeah, here. Kind of me, <laughs> as a kid, it made me feel really weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This something about something about sports and just like it just makes me so happy. Like how everyone could just bond with teams. Like you could, if you have a team, you you could talk sports. Easy. Oh yeah, it's like the easiest like icebreaker when like you find like a fellow <laughs> sports fan. You could, yeah. you, could, you could go for hours just talking about sports, heartbreaks. <laughs> I experienced a few of those. So that um, with the Navy too, you only did four years, and then you uh, is that when you started taking your uh, like managing seriously? Yeah, yeah. So I did I did four years. I moved here straight out of high school from Washington. Well, I did my Navy training first, but I moved here like a year after high school when I was done with all my my Navy training. And then yeah, once I moved here, I was still in the Navy, and I started kind of dabbling in the music. Okay. Did you have stuff. did you have friends inside the Navy too that helped, or did you kind of just do it by yourself? No, I did it completely by myself actually, and I was kind of like in the Navy. I was known, but I was also like an outcast because most people in the military like they don't they don't do the music thing. They're either like going to college mm. or working, you know, for like a jail or something, or you know, like kind of stuff like that. And so okay. it's more like traditional style work. Yeah, yeah, and I just wasn't really into all that. Like, I was maybe down to do something like that, like, down the road, but I wanted to try the music thing, you know, and kind of that was something that I was serious about. So I, I made some efforts to to get into it, and I did. Did you kind of find Navy 2 as kind of like a, not a safety net, but, like, if say if it didn't work out, you could maybe come back to the military and stuff? Yeah. Did you have that thought? Like a plan B? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It would have been, like, a, yeah, backup. A backup plan yeah. like a career you know and yeah. I, I wouldn't have minded to to do it but but yeah i was i was serious about the music stuff i mean it's awesome that, that yeah. yeah you didn't have to go back yeah <laughs> For real, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah you're doing it now like so yeah. you get out of the military like you you start this like your journey into like the music industry like what was that like what was the start of all that like yeah so the start well um i mean in washington so when i lived in washington i had a little uh uh, not a radio station, but like a little radio show with my oh, friend Nigel. Cool. I had a good friend named Nigel, and he uh, he ran track and field for uh, for Skagit, and he was from Seattle. And he taught me a lot. I used to like come on his show and not be a guest, but I would just kind of like help him out, like behind the scenes, and he would kind of show okay. me show me how it worked and stuff. And then so from there, then yeah, when I moved here, I started going to concerts, and uh, that's when I uh, discovered Young Verb. 
Hell so. yeah. <laughs> Shout out Young Verb. Yeah, if anybody from those days, like, you remember Young Verb, like, he was the biggest in the valley for a long time, bro. <laughs> yeah. It was legendary out here. It's always cool when someone hands you, like, legit, you meet him for five minutes, hands you the CD, and then you play it in your car, like, and you're yeah. just like, damn. This <laughs> like, I know this guy now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, some, uh, over, uh, talking about, like, the hustle, too, with Young Verb, was he, he was your first? artist you encountered my first yeah so he was the first artist i encountered and when i saw him perform he was uh opening up for taiga but when i saw him i didn't even think that he was an opener like i thought you know it was a very uh unbiased opinion when i when i first saw him but i you know i moved here from seattle and i didn't really know anybody here when i moved here i i had one friend that i had that actually was from washington and he transferred here from a community college and played basketball at Boise State. Oh shit! Okay, he was on the practice wow. squad, but uh, yeah, that was the only person that I knew, like my only real friend. So like, yeah, you know, I was just kind of out here, just kind of exploring, like kind of just you know networking, seeing what's good, and yeah, I saw Verb perform, and you know, it was a very, a very good performance, and I, I thought he was like actually touring with Tyga, like that was my genuine <laughs> Damn. opinion or something, you know? Because uh-huh. yeah, it was just it was a very good performance, so I reached out to him and. Um, afterwards, not at the show, but I think I reached out to him on Facebook, and then uh, yeah, we just met up and started start working together. Right, so like, and you were were you out in the streets with him, like selling CDs and stuff like that, pushing his music and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I started. Yeah, I helped him with uh, pushing his CDs. We go to the mall, we go to Boise State, you know, pretty much anywhere, and then kind of from there, just helped with that. Then started helping with his shows. We go to his shows with him. And then, you know, I would do, like, team meetings, like, try to put together a real team. Okay. You know. Nice. Um, like a street team type deal? Yeah, that. And then, like, we had a lot of business owners that were helping him. He had some investors. And so, you know, I was trying to put together plans with him. And that was kind of where I started my managing. I, I wasn't really, like, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was trying to know what I was doing. Because I was only 19 at the time, too. Okay. But, just a young man figuring it out as you go. Yeah, yeah, but I, it was it was an honor to be trusted. Like a lot of people were older than me, and they were looking at me to come up with a plan, and that was that was <laughs> that's, pretty cool. That's pretty cool. You know what I mean? So it was like kind of like I was the brains of of, of a the lot operation. Of the oh yeah, that, that's yeah, so sick, man. That he had going on. So did you um before? Did you always have a love for hip hop and rap, or like was there a music before that, or like how did you? get into like hip hop yeah yeah i always had a had a love for it always had a passion for it and uh yeah yeah i first got into it yeah with the with the radio station back okay. in uh, washington and then yeah i just knew that i wanted to participate i knew i wanted to try and make it into a job but i never had a passion to like be an artist myself i i wanted to either be like a promoter or some kind of manager that was kind of my my goal and then and then hopefully you know make it with somebody big so I could like either just have one artist that I focus on or you know use those platforms and help other ones too you know okay so, sick yeah just ke- yeah. keep bringing people on and putting people on and, and yeah. build the team bigger and bigger yeah have you ever thought about being on track uh or have you already <laughs> briefly briefly I've had some friends joke about it but I don't know it's just not for me but maybe it, a little nice back mad lip like in the back like yeah <laughs> Yo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are my favorite parts every time. Like, I wonder if they just hours and hours. Just, yeah. Be like, yeah. We're, we're getting that one. We're putting yeah, that one in. Right. That's the yeah we want to use, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. I feel like I'd, I'd be in your shoes if I was going to be in this business of like just not being on the track all, but like just to manage and just kind of see that behind the scenes process of like where to set everything up. Yeah. What's yeah. like, uh, what's a, uh, I'm sure like the biz like you get pretty busy like what's your diet like of like just making a meal quick or do you just is it always just oh, order man. out Ooh, um, it's the a juicy lot of, stuff yeah it's a lot of DoorDash I well, do like a road, lot of DoorDash I'm sure you're on the road too like yeah. always just DoorDash yeah just ordering DoorDash like yeah just I never have the time and what? I I never was really that good at cooking anyway oh man stuff. I feel you on that one do you so like a late night after a show you door like what are you door dashing <laughs> like what's the go to order oh, for Colton oh man I'll door dash man if Chick-fil-A is open <laughs> oh. I'll do a lot of Chick-fil-A I'll do like um um I'll, I'll mess with Del Taco sometimes Dang, sometimes Del um Taco. Jack in the Box you know 
the go tos. But I, I try to eat healthy too, because when you're on the road, it's really it's a grind and it it's a lot of wear and tear, you know. It's okay. On your body and well, just like, your mind. And then like at the end of the day, when you're so tired, yeah. but then you're like Taco Bell's available and it's really easy and accessible. And fast. Like, yeah. like, oh. I feel like, <laughs> too, like yeah. down. as a manager too, like you don't get like the luxury as like artists. Do like you have you have the same late nights, but you have early mornings too. You know? <laughs> yeah, you like, yeah, especially when there's a show. Yeah, because we're trying to meet a certain quota and. You know, we got to be out there pushing it. You, you know? got meetings and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's like the grind is real, bro. As a manager, like, yeah, you yeah. could. I think people don't give enough love like, to the people behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm sure you're always. Yeah. Your mind's always racing. Too. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a lot of pressure. And if anything goes wrong, we're the ones that will take the immediate blame. You know, if something is a failure, not what we wanted it to be. It's, you know, never the artist. It's the manager. But that's part of our job because we protect the artists you know even if they mess up or do something we try to save Step them in, or, yeah. yeah we try to save them and make sure they still look good oh my gosh make like public something not god forbid like say if like one of your artists or like anyone artists how they get in like trouble you have to make like a public statement i can't imagine like having to write down that yeah <laughs> yeah like, this is okay yeah yeah I, i've been in some situations where you know i had to not write a statement for them, but I had to try and kind of like massage the situation or try <laughs> oh, to gosh. like point out the good things about that person so mm. their their character was still, you know, respected. Yeah. You know, yeah, so. they're just trying to put fires out. Yeah. Oh, man, you're like a ultimate, not a babysitter, but like, man, you've really got a, you're a baseball manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to manage all your yeah. players and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. So like, as far as like going on the road and stuff, like where's like the farthest you've been on the road? Uh, Ooh. Farthest probably... Um, I think, let's see, either Tucson, Arizona, or I've been to Indianapolis, and Ooh. then I've been to, uh, I'm trying to think of Texas, um, uh, McAllen, which is very close to the border of Mexico. Oh, shit, it's okay. It's very close. I think it's like 15 minutes away or something. Oh, right. Oh, they, damn. They call it the uh, RGV Valley, I think is the... You got okay. like You got like McAllen, you got uh, this other town called Edinburgh or Edinburgh. There's a bunch of different ones right there, and it's right next to the border. All those little border cities. Yeah, I think 15 minutes. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. What What's like the most? Uh, what city have you felt the most like hip hop vibe in? Um. Hmm. Or like, damn, they go hard here. That's hard. <laughs> yeah. Um. Honestly, probably. Yeah, I would say New Mexico. Actually. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> New Mexico, like Albuquerque, and uh, there's these two other towns uh, called Farmington and Gallup. Okay. And they're actually on a reservation. But every time that I've went out there and done a show, like it sells out. It's mainly, you know, a Native American crowd um, with some Rasa as well. You know what I mean? Uh-huh, but, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's always packed. Like, wow, that's every crazy. time I love going there. And, and I can go there like <laughs> two or three times a year and it'll be, you know, four or 500 people just, just lit every sold time. Out. Wow. Yeah. It's really cool. So, I, I feel like when you find like those little like niche spots, it's hard like to not go. Just always go back there. Yeah, yeah. It's because <laughs> the good vibes time. are just so high every time. Yeah, New Mexico. I want to visit for the aliens. They got the Roswell. Roswell, mm-hmm. yeah. I've been to Roswell oh, a couple times. Lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go to that one just weird little pop up shop they have with all the aliens head like heads and all that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I did a meet and greet there at a dispensary like <laughs> oh, sick. two three months ago and. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was pretty interesting. I I forgot. I think I asked somebody about the aliens too. Like I was like, hey, so, like, what's up with the aliens? You see them a lot, but they they actually kind of got offended. So I felt oh, that. No. I was <laughs> like, oh my bad. Like I wasn't trying to you know be judgmental, but I was I was genuinely curious. Like what you know, like the alien thing. So you know. Yeah, but, I mean uh, that's a. Well, it's like a, yeah. it's like a huge like tourist spot. Like you, they had to be able to answer the questions. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like anybody gets like. Anytime you tell anybody you're from Idaho, like it's always a potato question. Yeah. But yeah. it's cooler if it's like alien questions. It's way cooler yeah. if it's aliens, dude. <laughs> they they probably get it a lot. That's probably why too. I'm sure like other people <laughs> they come there looking for the aliens and they probably ask them like, Hey, where's the best spot? You know? Oh, that's where's true. the best spot yeah. to find them? Where where can I get abducted? Please tell me. <laughs> We're trying to do a show in space. So we're just trying to get some connections. Let's take the podcast on the road to New Mexico, dude. It's time. Go to Roswell. Yeah, it's time, bro. What's um for a city too, or I guess a spot, like what's the most like uncomfortable spot you've ever been here? Like, oh crap. I, like you're like, I can't wait to get out of this place. Like wrap most this show. <laughs> uncomfortable. Um probably. Or like the weirdest a uh, weirdest place you've ever like had a show or something yeah weirdest yeah um probably 
Greeley, probably Greeley, Colorado, because my last artist that I worked with, you know, he was in the streets. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there was kind of like he's not active in the streets or whatever, but there was people that that didn't like him because, you know, he's oh, from his certain, past or whatever. Yeah, yeah. because. Yeah. So, you know, Greeley, Colorado was a little <laughs> was a little, little sketchy. Got so. a little dicey out there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a show where you just you go in. <laughs> And you go out, and there's there's no after parties. No matter no matter how good looking the girls are, you go in and you go straight out. Like uh, damn, see that's know, like yeah. like hearing these stories too. Like that's kind of like crazy to even think about. Like sometimes like artists like who have been active, like they're they have like a kind of a crazy past. Like you have to manage yeah. that too, like yeah. for their own safety. And that's nuts, bro. Like because yeah. then even puts you in like a like a dangerous spot. You know, yeah. like just because you're tied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people. Not a lot of people, but some people would assume that I banged and stuff like that. But I was, you know, I never did, never claimed to, you know what I mean? I'm a manager and I come from, you know, a decent background. So it's like, I, you know. Yeah, you're like, listen, I'm just a manager, bro. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I, people definitely ask me like, hey, are you, you know, a Sereno or, you know, because my last artist, that was, you know, his, his, his uh, background. Yeah, 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 it was blue, all blue, you know. But, so now, now I can wear now I can wear some red and not you know yeah, you, you, oh, not, no one will trip on me I can I can wear some red now so it's no one's gonna nice, press you about it nice freedom yeah like hey I can wear red <laughs> yeah that's crazy bro close your eyes at every like red stoplight yeah. <laughs> don't even look at the red light bro <laughs> I don't see stop signs wow that's nuts dude yeah. so like what, can, what was that like going on tour with like and managing artists who like was like. What would you be, was like gang affiliated? Like, what was that like? Um, it it wasn't you know, um, it wasn't sketchy in most places, but there were definitely some places that were more, you know, red zones or more you okay, know, yeah, yeah, like red areas like Greeley, and so you know, some people would would, would talk online or kind of send some crazy messages. So you know, oh, you geez. you always gotta take it seriously. Yeah, the yeah, majority sure. of those people, it's all talk, it's clout. You know, it's. <laughs> whatever trying to you know chase a big name or get some attention but it's still something to to be recognized and and now i mean it's kind of cool because i'm on a new chapter and i'm not working with them anymore so it's like i don't really have to worry, worry about, about that yeah. worry about that as much but it was good experience to to you know be like my situational awareness now it's at a much higher level oh know? for sure like it had to so, be when you're when you're messing with that stuff like in like yeah. crazy messages from people yeah so that, that part was but cool. now you could like now with your new artist you could like chill a little I bit can relax <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure yeah. not on edge all the time yeah yeah Gosh. So. how did what's the process of finding a new artist um yeah what's that like yeah um as far as finding a new artist there's some that i like i will reach out to some um because yeah i mean right now like i'm actually I'm, I'm looking for a bigger artist because yeah i've been i've been managing mr capone for the last year and you know i did all his bookings and was on the road with him and stuff but yeah i i have right now i have carolyn rodriguez okay so she's my biggest artist she did all the uh hooks for spm for Damn. south oh, mexico okay wow yeah yeah that's carolyn from houston texas so she's my biggest artist but i'm trying to um match her up with with some other people and so uh i've just been kind of taking my time though you know like trying to find who that person's gonna be the right know? one that's gonna fit into you like your yeah your model yeah yeah so but yeah no a lot of artists reach out to me you know they see uh what i did for for people like capone and and some other people and so you know they reach out and they try to get similar help so i i do these like management deals these management packages and Okay. Um, oh, okay. You know, there's there's a price they have to pay, but they get all my connections, like all my knowledge, everything that I learned becomes theirs. You know. Okay. So I offer. Different it's yes, like and then it's worth whatever whatever the price is. It's definitely worth it because like yeah. the connections you've had, the people you know, like yeah, that's like stuff like your network is like that's what, like is worth. It's priceless. It's yeah. priceless, really. Like. Yeah. Especially in, like in today's universe, like the networking is everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your network is your your net worth, and so that facts. And that's that's why I go on tour a lot, and I'm I'm down to do it because yeah, the, the internet hustle is a big part of it. But when you meet people in person, it's a whole different experience and a whole different impression. And right. a lot of times, those bonds become stronger versus you know you're just following someone on Instagram. You never got to meet them. You never got to shake your hand. You know. Yeah. And so I like. 
you know, and a lot of managers, I mean, there's road managers, but a lot of them don't tour like I do. Like they, you know, they, they don't sacrifice that. But me, I'm down. Like I've done four tours this year. I've done four. Oh, yeah. Busy, bro. Yeah. And so it's, it's a lot, you know, but. From- from being uh even from like 10 years ago too is, does it seem a lot easier from how, how easy to reach out to people just with all social media or is um, it a little harder or is it like more or like uh, i guess more crowded now yeah um yeah i i mean yeah I, I i can reach out to people on social media and they reach out to me uh i have a hard time keeping up with my messages though yeah and i try my best to get back to everybody but i the message thing is is a lot you know i probably get on Instagram, every day I probably get about at least a minimum, even if I'm doing nothing, like 15 messages, mm-hmm. maybe up to like 35 or 40 a day. You and got so, an assistant yet? I don't <laughs> you know. You got an assistant. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's uh, so just even responding is a challenge trying to get back to everybody, but I do my best. Well, I feel like in the 80s too, that'd be so hard just to like, I like this person, but I'll never talk to him. Right, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> Different state and stuff. I just well, that's weird. what's great. Yeah. Like hearing that, like you always think like social media make, and the internet makes things easier. But I think you're right when you like said it, like it makes things just more crowded. Yeah. Because like yeah. everyone knows you're accessible through like a, just a DM. So you're just flooded with DM. Or you yeah. see that last DM, but then someone that you possibly care about is right before that DM, but yeah. it shows up because the other person yeah. just talked. <laughs> well, like, a shout out Hot Tub Time Machine. I always thought it was funny when he, like, met a girl he thought was so hot. And he, like, he's like, I can see a future with her. But she's like, just call me. And he's like, how do I get your number? <laughs> and, like, later. <laughs> I'm like, that's so, I'm like, I can't imagine. Like, I think I was born in the right era because I, I think I'd, I'd break down back then. Yeah. <laughs> I need Before all the technology. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a 90s baby. You're 90. Yeah, so you're same boat. Yeah. yeah. 93. Yeah. Pre shout out to internet. Hey, and post internet. Like, yeah. <laughs> 93 right here. 93. You're what, 93 what too? What month? Uh, December. Ooh, I'm August. Oh, I'm okay. August. I something about, yeah. I don't know, 90s. If you could pick another decade you'd live in, what would it be? I, I would do 80s. 80s I would do 80s, so but I don't think I'd go back to 70s. But I would, I would do 80s. So <laughs> 80s would be cool. 80s would be fire. 80s yeah. just look like the coolest time of like this. Everything. Uh, I feel like there's just a lot of firsts in the 80s. Yeah. And, and then plus two, music was just, felt like it was finding its own rhythm again, just like, because there, there was just like a big boom. Yeah, 80s and 90s were good, but the 2000s and up, they got screwed with all this COVID, all this weird stuff. But yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah. yeah. I feel bad for them, like genuinely, like their high school experiences got all screwed Isn't up. Isn't that a trip? Yeah. It sucked uh, for them, yeah, for sure. Yeah. A little, a little positive. <laughs> they, they didn't have to like, the short the Wednesdays I wish I got to get off at Wednesday like at three o'clock like that would have been the best oh yeah they get the short Wednesday whatever. yeah they got the short Wednesday and stuff or like <laughs> but then again I, I do totally agree like all their proms and stuff like uh, even though I only went to one dance but like I get it it's like I get it <laughs> <laughs> just, just like missing your whole senior year because of COVID though bro like that's so trash it's like everyone like glorifies the scene like that's the best time of your life yeah like, it's your senior year or whatever like and you still have to miss it bro yeah it just feels weird like uh, I feel like for these teenagers growing up, they just not grown up too fast, but they just have to deal with like, oh damn, we don't have to, we can't experience any of these yeah. things. I feel what like they're was, just gonna be more like pessimists in the world because of that. What was your prom fit senior year? Oh, I God, actually, I, oh, I did didn't, you go to any dances? I didn't. Uh, <gasps> None. I was a little, little antisocial. Okay, mm-hmm. all little, right. You know, just kind of stick to myself. I mean, mine. I called the the person I want to go with. I got too nervous, so I just legit no prom polls or anything. I just called yeah. like, do you want to go to prom? She's like, yeah. So I was like, oh my. So I ran downstairs screaming to my mom and sister. I'm like, I'm going to prom. I, I, hey, I, I went to the after party. So I hey, go to the house parties. Hey, oh, and the after All parties, that, which yeah, like I get turned up. were legendary too. Yeah. Like, not talked about enough. Double, triple keggers, you know. Like, where, <laughs> where are all these high school kids? Like, as, like, where are we getting this shit? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, honestly, like, the thing about, like, the parties after, like, the dance, like, where do we get this stuff, bro? Like, who is supplying these kids with the correct kegs? That's what I'm, yeah, that's yeah. true, too. Well, like, and then it's kind of funny, too, the seeing cool that, like, yeah, yeah, definitely some parents. It's cool, too, to see, like, uh, everyone's drinking seltzers now. There's no, like, funny, like, Bud Light, Core Light, like, yeah. cheap college beer now it's mm. all like this seltzers too yeah, yeah maybe they make seltzer kegs now though you never know oh that'd be that'd be hard yeah <laughs> a keg stand that's a million idea dude i've only done one keg stand once and that was the worst idea ever hey when we were talking about covid though <laughs> so i actually got the word covid tatted on my middle what? finger yeah. on the middle finger <laughs> on that's the middle, middle finger yeah because my last day job that i worked they fired me 
before getting COVID. Wow. Like, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't let me come back. So I was like, all right, I got I got to get on my middle finger now. I have <laughs> to. So like, I have to. So I was like, fuck COVID. So no. What was uh, during yeah. uh, that, that like, span, what did you do, like, to make things work? Yeah, it's like a music art manager. Yeah. Did anything oh, change, manager. really? After I got fired? Uh, after, like, like wh- during the COVID times. The, oh, after getting yeah, fired yeah, during, and, like, uh, yeah. how did that? Like mess with um things. yeah uh i was not doing music like at a at a full-time pace okay. yet but i was working with uh troy av oh, i was okay, working yeah. with troy av and i was actually doing his uh facebook uh his social media and then that's part of what led me to uh work with mr capone okay for the last year so because i had those credentials and damn yeah. you're just like it's so crazy like as like as time goes like you're just rubbing shoulders like so many different artists and stuff <laughs> yeah like, and it's so crazy because like as you like you shake Capone's hand like you work Capone then like you're just like opening more doors and more doors like you're just climbing the ladder like yeah like to see like I always love to see that stuff in real time like as like someone is just climbing the ladder like the grind is so real right now it's it's just fun to see yeah yeah for sure yeah and um yeah you know right now like I mean I'll probably like I mean I, I work with all different types of rap but right now I'm I'm more focused on Chicano rap. Okay, oh. it's just my roots and my connections, you know, like okay. from Capone and Carolyn, they're kind of under that that genre. I mean, I mean, they, sure. they make all types of rap music, but that's their their you know like their bread and butter. That's what they're <clears> known <throat> for for sure. Yeah, you know, you got MC Magic, you got Lil yeah. Raw, Baby Bash, all them, and their names are right there. What's them. crazy too is like yeah. all those artists are still so big too, like especially like in like the Hispanic community, like yeah. they're always they're always getting love. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of like car shows and mm-hmm. yeah, um Capone did some shows with them, you know, this year and uh this last year. Carolyn's done a lot of shows with MC Magic, you know, they got songs together, so it's uh yeah, so I I've been able to, you know, mingle, meet with them and really, you know, tap in all the way and uh you know, and there's there's not a lot of uh white people either in Chicano rap. So like me being a <laughs> white manager, that yeah. was like that was like a thing like People were like, hey, what's this Blanquito doing? Yeah, you know, like, oh, shit. You know? That's so, so great. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm Capone's manager. Like, what's up? You know? Yeah. What's up? I think it's, like, it's perfect to, like, open doors for you because, like, they want to know, like, what's up with the white boy. Yeah, yeah. It was, like, it was like a talking point, like, because, you know, they look at him, they probably think his manager's going to have, like, face tats and, like, uh, all you know. All out. Yeah, yeah. And then they see me, they're like, wait, what's going on here? You know? Um, that's so awesome. they're like doing the math it doesn't add up <laughs> all the numbers yeah. Yeah. who's that guy <laughs> yeah have you felt like you picked up a lot though on the lingo and everything oh yeah yeah, yeah. I know a lot of words yeah I've learned like <laughs> you firme. probably know way more than me I know firme rasa uh, carnal yeah, uh, yeah bro bunch of, <laughs> bunch of different ones yeah they just fully accepted you into the culture man you know, that's sick like Simone yeah Simone or or uh, <laughs> my favorite one is uh, my favorite one is uh, eso <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Bro. I like that one a lot. Hey, so, like yeah. I think about like I'd be using that one on the regular. I'd be using it. I think about like growing up, like my my brothers like like lived a cholo last half for a little bit. Like you know what I mean? Like it's like <laughs> like so every once in a while, just like the word like level just comes to my mind. Like I just have to call someone level real quick, bro. <laughs> Just the disrespect is so real out here. Or a hey, you ever use uh, chale? I like yeah, that bro. one too. Like, <laughs> well, you know, see, like... A, see a girl at the club, especially a hey, if she <laughs> if she doesn't speak Spanish, I can go to my homies and be like, like point at her really quick and just be like, hey, chale. <laughs> like, <laughs> and they're like, we're the only ones yeah. that know, and like she doesn't know what's going on. You know, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah see, that, that, that secret lingo, bro. <laughs> like a hey, chale. Yeah. See, even my mom, yeah. she's like my. So my dad was Mexican, my mom's white. It's like my mom like always had like the homies that like my mom's house was like the safe house like they'd all come through all the time so like my mom like knows all these like cholo words too like she be like chale tamale all the time like mom please, <laughs> mom, please. <laughs> so let me go like back like in high school like mom let me go like chale tamale I'm like bro, bro. This sucks. bro. I just love something about that just makes me that talk just makes me so happy I don't know why just like those little yeah. lingo words. Just, I'm telling you on the wrong side of them, bro. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's, what's the saying? Like my my dad always just used to always say like love, just saying Vatos Locos forever. Oh yeah, bro. <laughs> Shout out to Blood and Blood Out, bro. <laughs> just like I was like Vatos Locos forever. Okay, yes. I'll say that. I'll say that to the time <laughs> I die. <laughs> what's the What's your favorite Shades brand? 
shades. I know you're rocking some spy right now, but do you have another favorite shades? Or? That actually, that is my favorite. Like spy okay. is because I mean, there's nicer ones. You know, you got like Versace and Gucci, but I like the way the spy. I like the way it fits and the way it looks. It's like like the frames are like they're not too big. You know, it just kind of fits perfectly and and they're comfortable too. Like you know how you you wear some sunglasses or some looks and like they kind of like they rub your ear and yeah. like you know what I mean. These ones are ah. like everything about them are they're like nice and smooth, you know. I need a, like I need a good spies. pair of shades. I haven't bought some in a long time. I yeah. used to rock Ray Bans all the time. Yeah, but, and I used to <laughs> growing up. I used to yeah. hate sunglasses because I used to think they looked so bad on me or like they felt weird. Oh yeah, <laughs> like I felt I felt like why am I wearing these right now? But now I I get it. I get. It. I love now. You're I love sunglasses. Guy, yeah. Well, it's cool. It's the ultimate thing too. You don't know like. If you get nervous or something and someone's looking at you, you don't have to look at them right away. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And, see, and that's why I wear sunglasses. A lot of people will joke and be like, Colter, you always have sunglasses on. But that's part of it is, you know, it's it, it's like it, it gives me more confidence, too. I don't know. Oh, it's yeah. like calming. Like it's a, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, I don't know. It's like a like a power thing. Like if you have your sunglasses on, you kind of, you know. You yeah, power, you I wear power moved us on the podcast. Yeah, dude. no, I wear I wear sunglasses at like yeah. job interviews. Yeah, like it, <laughs> hey, it's like incognito. That's what it is. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, like it's there's a lot of advantages to having sunglasses on. I feel like a different person yeah. with sunglasses. And you don't have and and when it's sunny out too, you know, you don't get blinded. You know, it's like <laughs> and then there's that benefit. And out here <laughs> yeah. in Boise, it's sunny a lot. So true, true, yeah. Like being from like Seattle, I think they get like thirty sunny days a year or something, bro. Right? Like, <laughs> yeah, not no very many. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't need sunglasses really out there. Mm -hmm. Just umbrellas. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. What's funny about sunglasses? Everyone's like, "Where are you looking?" But really, when I have sunglasses, my eyes are closed the whole time. <laughs> wow. You're just like asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah. When you're even like when you're you're resting or something, then people they're looking at you and they're like they oh, think you're asleep or they're like, "What's going on?" One hundred percent. But they just like. Culture's yeah. asleep on the podcast. Yeah, like, <laughs> what up? Like, are you good, bro? <laughs> Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> 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 that link is so good, man. I love it. Yeah, but what's the ultimate um, uh, meal? Hispanic meal. Uh, chile quiles. Oh, chile chile quiles. One, the chile yes, quiles. Are, and they're hard to find too. They're really hard to find. Like. What's what's in yeah. it, or what's in that? You have the um, the tortilla chips. Uh, usually, there's like a like a tomato sauce that kind of makes them a little soggier. And okay. then there's usually I think a couple poached eggs, mm -hmm. and then avocado and uh, cheese. I... And then. <laughs> <laughs> And Sorry, bro, and you then, were just talking too nice right now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes I think they throw meat or like cheese, you know, maybe like a little bit of potatoes, stuff like that. Yeah, like know? everyone has their own little spin to it. It kind of just becomes like this little bowl, like, you know, like a little bowl. And yeah, it's, it's cool. <laughs> Nikki's, yeah, Nikki's excited, excited too, bro. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had Chile Aquiles in a while, actually. I have, so to, go, I have to go try to find some of that. Like, I want to try that now. It's funny you yeah. say that. Look underneath your chair. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 we gotta start making meals for our guests. Just look under your the chair. Chile Chile is, yeah. <laughs> yeah hey, maybe no. next time I come on, we yeah, have chile chile. Yeah, hey, sir. I'm so down. I'll be fire, yeah, hell yeah. I remember one time we had uh, Brother Kiki on the pod, and he had made us uh, a spread. Me and Craze, it was so sick, dude. Hell yeah. Because we were talking about it for a long time. He's like, hey, I'll be, I'm coming through real quick, and he stopped in and left us these bowls like of his prison spread, bro. I'm like honestly, it was fire. <laughs> See, hell that's yeah. why I'd be, I, I'd taste it out of respect, but I'd be just too scared to. I'd be too picky. What? Because what's it? What's in it then? What do you? What's Literally in this? everything. Hmm. It's like pickles, like some beef sticks, like uh, oh, okay, like the cans of cheese, like the jalapeno <laughs> cheese, like <Damn>. prison <laughs> chips. I don't know, bro. I'm telling you, like it was amazing though. I could do all of it, but the pickles. I can't get down with pickles, <gasps> dude. No yes. pickles and and then onions too, and uh, not really pickles and onions. See, are like onions are different. If they if they're diced, get them out of my face. But if they're sautéed or something, yeah. like grilled, keep them here. Yeah. <laughs> I might touch yeah, them. Bro. Make my <laughs> eyes, they make my eyes too watery. Oh, dude. <laughs> That's why you wear the glasses. No one knows, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my allergies are tripping right now. Yeah. Are you, hey, hey, know. You're tearing yeah. up. I'm like, he just gets passionate when he cuts these onions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's, all right. So, I mean... That's the thing. Don't you hate it when you say no pickles on a chicken sandwich and they put pickles on? And then they put it on. Oh yeah, mm. oh, Yo, I, that, that's yeah. like a that's like a flavor I, I too pissed. that is like stays on the meat. Like, pause. 
But the pickles stay <laughs> forever, bro. They'll, they'll stain it. Sorry. Every, full, bro. every episode. I have to do, like, listen, bro, like, if you've watched before, you know, like, there's a guy out there that always cuts up these clips of me saying such shit. Yeah. Shout out to Big Shot. Yep, you got it. You got it. There it is. <laughs> Ladies time, and time stamp we got him. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> yeah, no, but I, bro, like, I just confused me because the pickles... Pickles yeah. are like, I mean, like I said, so before on the show, Coulter, I, I only could eat a pickle if I'm watching a movie. Really? It's a weird setting thing. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why, but I can only, every everything else, I'm not touching pickles at all. Yeah. But I think it's like a little childhood memory of this popcorn in a pickle and stuff. I don't Just know where it goes. Shout out to Friendly Freds. Shout out yeah. to Friendly Freds. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, coming, uh, I guess coming to Idaho too, um, was there other states you were thinking of looking for? like to live in too or was idaho always like a first destination yeah idaho was more because of my parents but i like idaho because it's a good like location it's not too far from a lot of major cities and markets yeah, yeah. but i have been strongly considering moving to vegas because it's closer to la and then it's still like not too far from here and right it's, okay it's kind of more of a hub it's more of a hub for um celebrities to kind of frequent in so okay, I, it's I a good have, place to be in. Good. Yeah, I've been strongly considering. Going I mean, out there. the constant constant shows every day too in Vegas. So I'm yeah, sure it's like easy. Yeah, I mean, I'd be a whole different person in Vegas and, <laughs> and really broke, maybe like really broke. Yeah, yeah, you gotta watch the liquor and the gambling for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. Something about gambling, I just I don't know when you hit. Ah, like it one time, good. I wore I wore a suit in Vegas one time. I felt so good, and I played <laughs> blackjack, and I was like, I got like a, I won like a, a five hundred fifty dollar bet. Wow. And I was like, and then there next to me was this funny like Asian couple, and they didn't speak English, but they're like this thumbs up, <laughs> and I was like yes, and then I like I was and I was already drunk too. I'm like oh my gosh, and then my friends are like, they're like back out, like you just paid for your trip basically. I'm like yeah. no, and I'm like tearing up. <laughs> and then, but then, but then I uh, I double down, and then oh, I man. lose all of it. <laughs> oh no! So I'm just with my long tall ass drink, just, yeah. just like slurping on just sad, like all sad, <laughs> sad, yeah. 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 Uh, Oh, Vegas! Vegas would be a cool spot, though. Yeah. What yeah, are you cool. thinking soonish or like just this? It's just in the in, it's the, in air, the works in the air. Yeah, it might be within maybe the next year. It's not like a maybe. closed destination. Like you'd be willing. Yeah. To, you know? Yeah, it might it might be within the next year. Or so. But. You ever had thoughts like moving back to like Seattle and stuff? Because like like we've seen like the Seattle music scene like kind of like pop off recently too. Yeah, yeah, I like Seattle a lot, but I just I don't think I could do it because it's too far from everything else. It's too far away. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's That's tucked away up there. Yeah, it's just too too much in the upper left, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> is it nice seeing uh, Idaho becoming more like with like hip hop? Like, uh, yeah. culture. it's not just always just straight country and stuff. Usually. Yeah, yeah. I, Idaho's grown a lot in the last couple of years. Uh, there's a lot of thriving artists and people doing their thing. So, and I, uh, I try to do my own shows here and throw shows out here and, and get them some love, get them some, some, uh, some spotlight. Like in December, I'm bringing out, um, Carolyn Rodriguez for my birthday. Oh, and sick. So I, I got some, a good amount of locals on there. I think I got like four or five that are opening up oh, and yeah. selling tickets and, Damn, yeah, that's so, so cool, man. Like, yeah. it's like, it's it's crazy. Like, you like build these ties, and like, people like just want, like, it's for your birthday. Like, Carolyn's just going to come out. You know what I mean? Like, that's so sick. Yeah, dude. just kick it and yeah, perform. It should be pretty cool. So, I'm do, excited. Do you have a dream venue you have in mind, like, that you love to go visit and stuff and like be like, damn, I'm managing this whole show right now? Man, um, I've heard a lot about the, uh, the Roxy in denver but i've never been but it's always piqued my interest i i've done shows in denver but we just never did it at the roxy but i hear like the roxy is a cool spot it it has a lot of hype i guess yeah interesting i have to go look that up the roxy i always want roxy theater i think is what it's called but they just call it roxy yeah i always want to go to red rocks oh yeah super cool things at the red rocks too they just look it look it looks looks cool that'd be cool yeah yeah all right do they ever play concerts like in the like the roman coliseum and stuff do they uh, do that <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> not until Colta does it not yeah. right. hey hey that'd be speak cool speak that in existence right now you yeah. better facetime me when you do it <laughs> all right all right yeah, i'll <laughs> make that happen because <laughs> like i don't know i mean that'd be a cool spot just to do at a wreck stadium something so like <laughs> legendary do it at stonehenge, <laughs> Stone, yeah. stonehenge. Yeah. party at the hinge dude <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Sorry, not to throw off the conversation real quick, but I, it, just in my head, I have to know too. Like, do you going back to Roswell? Are you big alien guy? I, I mean, I think <laughs> aliens are real. I think they're real. But uh, have you ever encountered a UFO or like seen anything 
suspicious. Maybe once or twice. Yeah, okay. Or something quick. Yeah. You're like, hmm. Well, yeah, like, yeah. You think, well, what was that? What was that? I yeah. thought it was like a star, and then it moved for like three seconds and disappeared. It starts See? spelling out Time, the world's ending. Couple times. <laughs> it yeah. Goes away. Yeah. I always think about that. Like, I always get scared of, like, uh, just something, something. Did you see the uh, NASA sh- shot something? Like, uh, it was far away just so it doesn't alter anything, but they shot a meteor just in case. Oh, wow. So they're really? doing that technology just in case if uh, something does in the future, future, try to hit us. Yeah. Wow. I like I think, to push off course. Because I always thought that, like, what if it does happen? Like, like what do we do? Yeah. What's crazy, too, is, like, they get figured out, like, where something's going to hit, like, in space, like, just doing math. Like, that's crazy <laughs> to me. Like, according to my calculations, this and this, that's going to hit Earth in, like, 40 years. Like, how do you even, like, figure yeah. that out? Bro? Yeah, that's what I wonder, too. Yeah. Some of that stuff beyond me yeah no for real bro i I struggle with division and fractions bro i can't figure that out bro dude i failed algebra right away (laughs) as soon as i walked in i was done dude i mean yeah i'm not math and me just don't go together Mm -mm. not that what was your what was your favorite subject in high school probably um history Ooh, that's a good good one for sure history yeah history is good i had a embarrassing story where i like it was eighth grade history though, but there it, I was studied so hard for this thing, and like you just had to name all the countries in Europe. Yeah, and they're like, "Don't say it out." Like I didn't know you weren't supposed to say it out loud because just yeah. yesterday we're doing the like call outs and stuff. Like he pointed at it and we named the country. Oh yeah. So then he point. He's just it was on that. You know, everyone knows that old school projector that he puts the little plastic thing over, and then you see it on the oh yeah the okay. screen. <laughs> so he like he points it. And he's like he points at it, and I just yell Germany. And he just looks at me with like the most, he's like going to beat my ass. And I, like, I look around at all the students. They're like, you're not supposed to say anything. I was like, damn, I actually knew that one. So everyone knew Germany. And you didn't get any credit for it. Well, and if I looked up Germany now, I would not be able to point it out. <laughs> yeah, right. You're like, wait, where's it at? <laughs> have you done, have you done international shows? Um, I haven't, but I would definitely like to. Um, I was actually talking to, um, uh, Dizzy Wright's people, and they uh, at the end of this year they actually have a tour in I think it's Australia. Damn. And yeah, we were talking about that because I was trying to get him and Capone to do a song, um, him and Mr. Capone, because okay. I thought it'd be really good crossover because they have different crowds. Yeah, that'd be sick. Like you know, Capone has you know more of the Rasa and Dizzy Wright's more like kind of Tech Nine. Uh huh. That vibe. Yeah. So I was like, you know, you combine both of them and it would benefit each oh, other. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah, they both they're both down. They just both haven't really made the time. They both tour really hard. I mean, super busy so, guys. Yeah, I feel like you guys should go party it up in Canada. Yeah, that'd be tight. I think Canada would be cool. Toronto looks so cool. Yeah. Yeah, Australia is dangerous. So, so so many things that kill you out there. Dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kangaroos, got, spiders. Dude, those spiders, man. I don't know. Yeah. My friend said yeah. he woke up with the tarantula in his blanket. Oh, and I was like, shit. I don't know if I could do that. Watch out for the spiders. They'll get you. <laughs> They'll get you. I've never been, so. I, I, been I want, I'd like to go. I what's I guess what is the big the biggest last collaboration of like artists like that? Combined? Like a crossover type shit? Yeah. Mm. Of like with like, like to have Baby Bash done anything like that? or I honestly like, not, don't, don't know. know. Yeah, no. I feel like Tech Nine, yeah. Tech Nine is probably the closest to some something like that. With like an international artist, or just... yeah, like a big. I guess, uh, I guess a bad baby though could mm. do maybe did something. Yeah, Capo- or bad bunny. Capone. Bad, he did. Yeah. He did a big song with um, uh, his name's Moose something. He's uh, from India. But oh, he, li- he lived in Canada, but he got he got killed like three or four months Aww. ago. Oh, RIP. In Damn. Toronto, but if you look up Moose, like Moose, I forget. It's like Sidhu Moose or something like that. Uh huh. It's hard to pronounce because it's like a different language, but he uh, he's super big. Like they put out just like an audio song like right before he died and they were going to shoot a video to it. Um, and uh, like just like in one day, it did like two and a half million views. Whoa. And it was just the audio, no video. And it was wow. like all real just because he's got hella fans or uh, people from like India and like Canada. And, OK, you know bro, I mean? that's huge. Yeah. That's like, a lot of views. Yeah. So it's, well, it's always it's always funny to seeing like how artists here in america but then like you see bts and they're like yeah probably even bigger <laughs> and i'm like damn like the fan base yeah. is even bigger. i'm like i can't even imagine it. well Just like you have people like in america that are like super huge like fa- uh, bts like stands like yeah, yeah. Even, they don't speak korean you yeah know what I mean? yeah like, they just that's that's insane to me like when music and like cross like borders like that and like yeah. and 
people don't even know the words. You know what I mean? Like that's just crazy to me. Yeah, man. yeah, because he would rap, and I forget what the um the moose guy would rap in. Uh, I forget what the language is called, but the language of the India language. Uh-huh, right? Okay. Um. Yeah. So it's it's pretty wild. That's he did, so interesting. He did yeah, like see? all of his songs in that language, and then Capone did another song with uh, this guy named Frenzo Harami, and he's from the UK, and he would rap in um. I forget what the language is, but he's I think uh uh from Pakistan. Oh shit! Yeah, okay. Yeah, so he'd rap in that. Wow. Language. So there's a lot of like Arabic. Yeah, yeah. I guess it would be Arabic, or I don't know which one, but. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. See, like, collabs. like, and like, that's like the beauty of music. Like, when you could do, like, just make these collabs, like, just speaking two different languages, but like, yeah, but people, they just love it. That's, that's, it's like on yeah. like a spiritual level, you know what I mean? Like, it just gets you. Yeah, music's cool. It's straight up, it's the universal language. It really. sounds cool. It's got too. a good bump. It sounds cool because when they would collab, you know, Capone's coming with like his gangster LA style. <laughs> uh-huh, yes. And then you got Friends of Harami doing like his UK style. And then it's on like a completely different beat, like a beat you'd probably never hear oh, in the States. Whoa. But it's like a rap beat, but it's ah, like, it's got that though. flavor, that international flavor. Whoa, so it's cool. Okay, and, that's sick, <laughs> dude. Yeah, it's it pretty cool. They got a couple joints out there. So, well, like the last yeah. thing I can remember, I listened to Japanese trap music. Oh, it's kind of wow. cool how they're just like they're yeah. rapping so hard in Japanese. I'm like, gee, this is nuts. Well, well like the higher brothers go hard. Well, it's so cool though. Like um, when other languages too, like the language rhymes, but then when it translates on paper, it doesn't rhyme at all. Like it's just yeah. funny to see how that works. And then like vice versa, like we're all making bars, and but then <laughs> they like they're like in the other language, like this doesn't make sense. So it doesn't <laughs> rhyme. <laughs> like the words we put. It's just weird how that translates and stuff. Because I remember in English, uh, I mean Spanish class they uh you hear like a song and like every word uh rhymes so right but yeah. then and like they're just saying like a love poem i'm like this is weird <laughs> uh, i don't know something about international yeah music, music well that's like a like music is just crazy the way it could tie people together and stuff like yeah. and like you said it's a universal language yeah. yeah as long as you got a good bump and make you dance you're oh, good yeah. <laughs> Or Shake that tail for this or you just bob dude. your head you know <laughs> <laughs> but i see you have the buried sanders jersey on dude yeah uh, so, do you have a favorite football team, Colter? Yeah, uh, Seahawks. A Seahawks guy. Damn. Uh, stick with the home I mean, team, that's you know? another great running back because Marshawn. That's in. Yeah, uh, another great running back for sure. Marshawn's you, nasty. Uh, were you watching the game when he did that against the Saints? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. And there was an earthquake because the crowd was so loud. Yeah, <laughs> that's that so was insane. Dope. That was tight. Yeah. And did you, did you go a lot when you were back home? Like, did you go to a lot of Seahawks games and stuff? I went to some. Yeah, like a couple of year probably. Oh, yeah, man, bro. Like, year. it's crazy how they say like the how loud the stadium is bro because like i went to a sounders game and like i was on the freeway whatever like you could hear the stadium they're like we're for their chance like and like we're not even anywhere near where the stadium was like it was crazy yeah they do a lot of parades yeah a lot of parades it's it's so sick dude like i just i wish we lived in a bigger sports town like to have that type of vibe because like because we because i went down with the march too like when they were marching to the stadium like bro it was so like that was just so much fun it was the coolest thing i've ever been a part of for sure yeah the other it's cool experience the other cool city i heard about is uh nashville for the titans they have like a whole kind of like main street for boise uh-huh. but it leads up the end of the street is the stadium oh, so oh it's that's kind of tough cool scene and then like every bar is three stories oh that's like cool. so they got like and it's cool how they do it they do a uh, first first floor is hip-hop second floor is like uh punk rock oh. in the third floor so you get like three different genres of music in one building that's just cool. sick. I'm like, damn that's a cool idea yeah that's cool when they do that what's there. your guilty pleasure music guilty pleasure oh uh, yeah <laughs> if you're like if you want to take a little break from hip-hop like what you listen to george michael i'll do some <laughs> classic rock i guess hey, some nice. classic rock yeah who's your favorites uh, I'll go with like the Eagles, maybe some oh. John Mellencamp, you know. Dang. Uh. <laughs> Jack and Diane. <laughs> yeah, <dude>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that song, I don't know why, it just reminds me of bowling every time. That song comes on every time, and I'm just like yeah. having the best time of my life. Hell yeah. <laughs> that's the start journey. of your bowling montage. Really? <laughs> you know, you can't go wrong with the, the journey. That's a, that's a good Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. Dude, I've been listening to a lot of Queen lately. Yeah. Just something about it. Journey, Journey, that Steve Perry has the best voice. Of yeah. Like, he just gets like. 80s voice he gets Sounds, down yeah. yeah synonymous with the 80s his voice is those 80s sure. those 80s rock bands this oh, those hair bat hair hair metal bands <laughs> dude yeah <laughs> no eagles though eagles they're every time too i hear a song uh even lately i'm just like i didn't know they made this song too like they have like yeah, 18 songs that i'm just like holy shit and they're getting eagles. they're getting up there too they're getting up there see that's age, the like 80 or 75 uh, a lot of them are 
<laughs> you know, like I think early seventies at least. Most of them. That's the hardest too, because like yeah. listening to music on, like it's always great, but like this, uh, sometimes the artist too could be like on their off game, but like the scene, like a, a concert live is the best. Like something about this live music, and it's just the best. But it's so I feel like it's so much cooler like to hear like an artist like when they bring like a live band like they hear their songs with like a live band is so sick too yeah it's like, it's like it, just, it sounds totally different i just seen uh conejo perform last week and and he had a a live band and it's crazy because when i met him i met him the week before in yakima he had a show with uh carolyn rodriguez it was her juan Gotti, and uh conejo and uh he didn't have a live band then but then um out at here. this show out here yeah he had one so it was kind of cool to see. Oh yeah, you that. saw like the two different styles, like how it sounded. That's cool, man. Well, yeah, and I mean, even in Chicano rap, you rarely see that. Like, you rarely see someone rapping with like a full band oh, behind them. That is like not a thing. That's, That's a really thing. rare. Yeah. So I was like, oh shit! Like I was really, you know, checking yeah. out the performance, and it was pretty cool. You had like a drummer, like two guitarists, and damn, that sick. It is tight. it? Yeah. And everybody was 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 messing with it too. Like everybody liked it. Damn, maybe he's the start of a new era in the, in the Chicano yeah. music industry, dude. Yeah, it was really cool for sure. How I come people like, uh, don't do that? I guess is it just I don't too know. much of a audio? I'm not too sure, but I I mean I've never seen like you know Baby Bash or MC Magic. I've never <laughs> seen true. any of them do it. So like to see Conejo, I was like, oh shit, because I've I've seen a lot like pretty much every artist now perform multiple times now in right. Chicano rap and yeah he's the only one that really had like a full full band too you know that, that's fucking that's sick badass. that's badass have you seen yeah. have you ever experienced like metalachi uh i'm not sure what is that it's a heavy metal mariachi band oh no i haven't i know i know i know mariachi <laughs> but i'm like oh shit what? it's <laughs> at the at the bar near Lux. They oh, have like nah. metalachi and they just go hard, but it's uh, mariachi music, but it's all heavy interesting, metal. dude. That'd like, be kind of fun. But they're like wearing sometimes they wear the that death metal makeup and oh, stuff. What? It's like wow. whoa, that's not true. Damn. I know that. I love this. I love uh, dipping my toes in some of that music too. It's just like yeah, it's because like you never know. Like how do they make this? I got I got a good friend named uh, A Rod. He lives in Seattle, and uh, the last couple months I've been bringing him around like to DJ. Because uh-huh. Carolyn and at the time Capone, they didn't have their own DJ. So I, I brought him to like DJ and stuff. And his background, it's predominantly like EDM and uh, reggaeton. So it was like a really nice like Mix balance up. because, you know, you got Capone with the gangster rap and then, you know, Carolyn's like Houston st- style. And then here comes A Rod like doing his <laughs> raving, like, you know, Damn. his raving, his reggaeton. You know, he's got like spiked up hair. It's just like a completely different vibe. But oh, heck yeah, man. I was able to mesh all of it together. Damn, see, that's, cool. yeah, that's yeah. crazy too. Like, you made something sick. Yeah. With the, between the three of them. That's cool, man. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, like a mini Coachella. Like a little mashup. <laughs> a little yeah. festival. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, he gets a whole different audience that none of them get, which is, yeah, like the, like the EDM, EDM squad. Yeah. And, and the reggaeton. Yeah. Because you never know if someone else could just be like, ah, oh, I think I like this kind of music now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah you're opening. Like, that's cool. Like, as a manager, like, yeah. when you, like, like you're pairing these people, like, you're, like, yeah. You're ex- making people experience a whole different sound. Like, they probably like, have never tapped in before. Yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah, I try to strategically, you know, certain people put the right mm-hmm. pieces together, and it'll make a better outcome for everyone. Facts. So. That's why I've, I've always people need to keep an open mind with music, because sometimes you get those. Uh, people could always, like, have a closed mind, and then they always want to stick with that music. But sometimes you just, you never know what you could like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's good when you have a team to kind of have at least one person kind of represent every community or type of people out there i think is is important so then you get a a larger audience for sure kind of spread the wings a little bit you bring yeah the more people you could bring in to like experience the sound the better right yeah yeah like when i managed capone he didn't have a a black artist either so i like went out of my way to try to make that happen Mm. and then uh he signed a black artist out of las vegas named stone p oh damn that's cool man uh, that's that's crazy like you made that guy like you helped that guy level up too, like just yeah. like that's fire. Because at the time when when that happened, whack uh, whack one hundred, uh, he was kind of dissing like Serenios and like Mexicans and stuff, kind of, and he was like saying, you know, that he wouldn't like go out of his way to work with like Mexican rappers, kind of thing. I don't know uh-huh. if you guys ever peeped that, but it was like yeah, yeah. Last year he was kind of like talking down, and I was I told Capone, I'm like, man, that's pretty lame. 
<laughs> but like we should kind of be like the leaders in the situation and you should have a black artist you know what i mean mm. yeah and, and he agreed. let's open the door yeah he agreed with that and, and he's had one in the past like he did a lot of work with sugar free but he currently did not have even one so okay. i was like hey you know like stone he's out in vegas he's seasoned he's mature you know um let's let's give him a shot and his music's badass his music's really good like he is one of definitely by far one of the most talented artists that i that i have wow. even right now like his skill is just it's phenomenal i mean that has yeah. to be a great feeling too You're like yeah Damn, hell yeah yeah he's hella good so they got a nice artist on the roster for sure yeah that's like yeah that's man like you're not even like Stone's manager, but like you, like I said, like you level them up, just like out of love. Like that's so cool, bro. Well, yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> actually, I am his manager. Oh, you are? Oh, shit. I, I am. Yeah, but I got him a good distro deal through High Power. Oh, sick, bro. So yeah, so Capone, he has his own YouTube channel, and then like, there's you know options for you know yeah like, like packages like yeah yeah about. yeah he has he has there's a YouTube channel and and people can you know get on that basically and it's called High Power Music. Oh, okay, so, yeah, because he's like the high power soldiers and stuff too. Like that's all his deal, right? Yeah, yeah, that's his label. Yeah, he's always oh, been. Okay, he's always been independent. He never signed to anybody. So high power music is his um, YouTube channel, and there's a lot of all the different artists that he's either ever had or currently has. It's all there. They go on that channel, like you know, you got Miss Lady Pinks. She has a lot of stuff on there. You got you know Grincho, Sad Girl, Bugsy. Like there's a pretty long list. Okay. Of, of people yeah what's crazy too like i we back in the day like my brother's how we had went to vegas to watch some boxing and like we had met this boxing this boxer who's like tied to high power too like in like oh like, yeah and, like just like the like the the way you could like network too like that's like it's crazy like, what was his i don't remember his was name. it was it amir khan no uh because they're, they're pretty good friends I think it was yeah. uh, maybe it was like uh, Mikey Alvarado or no, uh, oh, I don't remember his name, dude. Something, but like he was uh, like super tap, like tapped in with all the hype. Like, and like I think Capone was there that night for that fight. Like, yeah, he's really into boxing. He loves boxing. Some shit popped off. Like there was like a whole rumble backstage. It was <laughs> not. Yeah, I was, I was like, yeah. I'm just trying to get a, a beer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's dude. crazy times for sure. Are you a big boxer fan? Yeah, yeah, I like boxing. I'll watch it. Yeah, it's cool. Didn't Canelo just fight Triple G? Yeah, for the the trilogy. Yeah, and yeah, then, I didn't get to watch it, but do you have a favorite boxer? Probably Mayweather. Oh, I, I like Mayweather. Yeah, it's the greatest like of all time. Yeah, greatest. Yeah, the way time. he carries himself, there's things to learn from like his confidence, like what confidence can do for you just in I life. See what you mean. Yeah, he's so confident and, in everything he does. Yeah, yeah, and when you that's that's true. He has yeah. Some, like, <laughs> when, you have, when you have confidence, it can, confidence can go a long way. You just have to find it and figure out how, how to, to control that. Yeah. yeah, having like a supreme confidence like can yeah. carry you. Like you said, can, like look. I mean, look at Jake Paul. Like that guy's dominating right now. He's huge. And, like, that guy's like so cocky, but like obviously he has like a supreme confidence in himself as well. Like just to knock people out. Yeah, I guess when you have that combination of being confident and not caring at all what people think about you, that's yeah. like probably where you can strive the most. Yeah, yeah, just kind of like accepting who you are. You know. Because well, I, yeah. I barely missed Mayweather by this much. He walked right behind me at this convention. Yeah. And I was waiting for him the whole time. He had, like, his Rolls Royce in the front, his Lamborghini. Because I just wanted to see a legend, you know. Yeah. And then, of course, he has, like, this entourage of eight guys around him. Wow. So, then of course, we're just like yeah. this with our hands on our hip looking around. <laughs> yeah, his and then he just hmm. walked right past me. I was like, damn. His security is always deep. I actually, I met him this year one time. He was at this club that I was at. And we were at his Whoa. table for a little bit, and uh, I got a picture with him and stuff. And Hell yeah! It, it was actually the night that Stone signed with Mr. Capone. Oh it was damn! Actually, the same <laughs> was night, good night we were celebrating, yeah, and just kind of kicking it and talking about the future plans. And that same night, the club we were at, he came to after, and then we were kicking it, damn. and him and Capone, they you know they <laughs> know each other, badass. they're friends. Oh you know? shit! Okay. Yeah, yeah, and so. Yeah, when's the really cool. when's the last time you've been like legit starstruck or do you get starstruck um not i mean damn i mean maybe like if i saw like rihanna or something oh, or, you know yeah. like somebody like that i'd probably be starstruck a, but, by Nicky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but no i mean i've met a lot of celebrities but you know it's a business so it's like i don't you know at the same time you i got don't, the shades on yeah, yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I, true. Yeah, I, I I treat them just like a regular person. You yeah, know, I, I treat them. You know, what's been the so. coolest? I guess in your like even like childhood maybe, but you're just like wow, that was pretty tight that I just met this person. 
in my childhood or like probably i guess or, it's a not a, for business but like i guess like a personal like you're a fan just, like wow i'm really hyped yeah. to meet you yeah yeah um probably uh ichiro what? Oh, damn. Oh, Ichiro. damn. Seattle legend, dude? Yeah, Ichiro. That was pretty cool. Yeah. <sighs> that's bad. Ah, yeah. oh, dude, that's dope. <laughs> yeah, Ichiro. That was cool. Yeah. How if, how small is he? Was he smaller or is he. I remember him being small, but I was small. So yeah. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I was a little kid, too. Yeah. So I don't know. Dude, Ichiro. I think man. I was like 10 or 8 or something. Yeah, like, that's so sick. What a meet, dude. That's yeah, was badass. Like third or fourth grade. Dude. Yeah. Big, big flex. Yeah, I'd meet. Cool. That's like the Jordan of basically Asian baseball <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. And that, and now it's like shohei otani so good too yeah yeah there was no really big japanese player i think before him no i he think, was, yeah, I think like he was the, the one. one yeah that yeah, was only ichiro and then it went hideki matsui and then it I was remember that guy. and then um who was the pitcher for the red Sox? daisuke matsuzada i think or something like that. oh yeah yeah, yeah he was this, that's pretty much it, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's and it. now the guy but on now the Angels. Have, yeah, yeah. yeah, that which is just a star. Which like he's like has like six some kind of crazy amount of strikeouts, like thirty home runs. Like he's just insane, dude. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Maybe, maybe you never know. Maybe, if, even if you go to Vegas sometime in the future, maybe be able to like lead out the crowd <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> yeah, <seriously. laughs> yeah. Or drink, or like hit that drum at the Seahawks Stadium. Hey, that'd yeah. be. I'd be with it. I'm done. <laughs> or what time are we at? Yeah, yeah. Hour Let's five. Go. Oh shoot! All right, oh, we're an hour. We're cooking, bro. Hell yeah! Yeah, let's. Well, let's give a shout out to the long drink. Yeah, <laughs> shout yeah. out to the long drink. <laughs> What's that? Oh yeah, okay, steak, oh. bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You want to take us off, Nick, with that? Or did you send it to Lala? Oh, <laughs> okay, I got it. My bad. Oh, oh there it is, right there. <laughs> there <laughs> Yes, we want to give a shout-out to Long Drink to finish. Long Drink Company is sponsor of the show. We appreciate everything Woo. you do for us. Um, shout-out to Wave Media Records, the crew, the squad, the team. Do you have anything dropping soon, Nikki? Anybody? Uh, yeah, so we have... I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you we fine. Can hear you. <laughs> we got Pike dropping uh, at the end of the month on the 30th. Nice. Shout-out, yeah, Pike. Archie dropping uh, next Friday. Woo! Well, this Friday coming up. Um, as far as I know, that's it. I'll be dropping in October. Damn. And from what I know, that's pretty much it. Okay, so the team music's coming soon from Wave Media Records. Yeah. That's uh, Wave Cartel Beats is the in-house beat producers. Anything you need from these guys, they'll get for you. Beat production wise, and they're filthy. Yes, you know, beats about oh, Wave yeah. in, Wave Image Studios. We got videos, photography, anything you need. We do like. For your family, for your business, and uh, yeah, Birth, the, birthday parties, birthday parties, <laughs> do <yeah>. anything, <laughs> anything. The family reunions, I think you guys did once. Commercials, yeah. commercials, yeah, bro. And yeah, Wave Media Studios, with who are the hosts of the podcast. We appreciate everything you guys do for us. Um, oh, yeah. And like, what that's the re- recording too. Oh mm-hmm. wow, that's cool. Yeah, in house studio, whatever studio time you could book with Nikki, you could book with Craze. Yes, sir. Make a little commercial. Engineer everything. <laughs> These guys are legendary. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, let's and then uh, let's wrap up. Like, yeah, Coulter, Coulter what, what do you have coming up? Yeah, what, what do you got going on? Anything to plug? Oh man, for your artist maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, just booking more tours, more shows, uh, a lot of stuff with Carolyn Rodriguez. Okay, doing a lot of stuff with her. So, um, yeah. is she on Instagram? She is, yeah, just under her first and last name. Okay, Carol- Carolyn Rodriguez. Carolyn Rodriguez. She's also in my bio too. Okay, perfect. You can find her in my bio. On my and your Instagram. Insta is Coulter the Soldier. Coulter the Soldier. Yeah. Is that the best way to hit you up, or like business email? Yeah, probably. Uh, probably like my Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Instagram. Yeah. Sweet. Well, hell yeah. We're glad to have you on the show, man. Yeah, thanks yeah, for coming on. taking yeah. your time to get on the show. Yeah, too. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, and the show's so. like we're trying to like figure out like the ad reads and stuff. Like, so it's kind of clunky right now. So <laughs> yeah. appreciate for staying through that. Uh, oh, thank you guys great. for everyone tapping in. Happy Monday. We love you guys. Peace. Peace. Yep.